Hey there, fellas. Okay, so we're experiencing some lovely evening weather, we've still got a bit of sunlight, and we're coming at you with another experiment. Here's the idea. I'm never one to hide our guinea pigs. Here's the patient right here. This is a Toyota RAV4, which is supposedly super reliable. The gearbox is actually slightly acting up on this one, which is no surprise, since it has seen a bit of mileage. And here's what we're looking to do. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos, and one of them showed a bunch of guys meeting up and having a very heated argument. Someone said that you can't engage reverse at 62 miles an hour in an automatic transmission car. And a lot of my friends actually share that same exact opinion. Anyway, so that's basically the entire point of today's experiment. Time to smash. Let's do this. All right, I'm off. Right. Time for liftoff. Nothing seems to be happening. But why? And now I'm backing up. Someone was saying I couldn't engage reverse. Okay, fellas, so here's what's up. I put it into reverse while driving at 62 miles an hour. After coming to a stop, I pressed the gas and started backing up. But nothing happened while I was at speed. Let's maybe try taking it a bit slower. Let's do that at 25. Here we go. Nothing. The engine is screaming while the car is coasting. It's as if I threw it into neutral. What if we stop? Not touching anything. And it backs up when I press the gas. What sort of Japanese sorcery is this? I don't get it. Let's try doing it at 40. 25, 30, 40. I'm revving it to 6 grand. And nothing is happening. Coming to a stop. Using the brake pedal. And now I press the gas. And we're backing up. It's a miracle. There's obviously some kind of redundancy built in. Looks like they idiot-proofed it. To keep people from engaging reverse on the move. As you might imagine, throwing the car into reverse at that kind of speed is a frightening prospect. Now what'll happen at 12 miles an hour? If we get nothing at higher speed. Maybe this'll work. Okay, there's 12. Nothing. It's just coasting. I've got the revs at two and a half grand. And it hooked up. Wow, that was pretty brutal. Let's try that again. Twelve. Come on now. Still going twelve. It's coasting nicely. I've got the revs at two and a half thousand. Three thousand. We're slowly losing speed. There we go. There's obviously some kind of protection happening. The car knows when we're driving forward, apparently, and doesn't want to give us reverse. Right, guys, we're back at home base, and we really have to do something about the situation. It's a good thing that the gearbox has some sort of protection, but we'd prefer to get rid of it. So we've gone ahead and taken a look to see what we could disconnect. Each of us had our own ideas, but in the end we disconnected the plug for the gear selector. Let's see what happens now. I'll just put it into drive. What have we got? 12? Before it wouldn't go into reverse even at that speed. All right. Now we're going forward. Let me just... We have reverse. Looks like we're onto something. It doesn't see that you're engaging reverse. Yeah, looks like it's all a mechanical thing now. Awesome, it even goes in at 20. 
Time for us to go back to the test track. After unplugging some of the gearbox sensors, it all worked beautifully on the hoist. And now we're back at the test track, where the guys from the Auto Driver 154 Racing School did their thing, if anybody would like to come on by and see what they got. For starters, I'm gonna try doing this at low speed, and if that works, I'm gonna go a bit faster. I'm keen to engage reverse at high speed to see what comes out of it. I say we get this pig up to speed and throw the box into reverse. 12 miles an hour. Engage reverse. Fantastic! How many wheels did we have spinning there? Okay, so you saw what happened at 12. It all worked exceptionally well. Now let's try that from 25. Show me 25. Almost there. That's 25. All right, though it goes in a bit weird. It grabs, then it lets go, then it repeats a few times, until it finally gets a good hold of the situation. Let's do this. Watch this, guys. 25. Slow down. Slow down. Stop. The grab point is pretty unpredictable and unexpected. Let's try that again. Okay. 25. I just had the throttle pinned. And that did nothing. That was pretty violent. Let's try 45 miles an hour this time. Let's do it. That's 40. 45. That's it. It's had it. It stalled immediately. Out of all the electronics, the only thing left in place is the speed sensor. Which we will be unplugging as well. We need to get the box to engage reverse mechanically. Obviously we're dealing with a small displacement four-cylinder motor, which can't really do much against those four driven wheels and this car's considerable weight. It's not an even matchup for sure. Okay, we've disconnected the speed sensor. I'm guessing the speedometer isn't gonna work. Well, yeah, why would it work? I'll be waiting for a signal. 25. It ate that right up. Great! You understood what just happened, right? I got the result I was looking for. Right, I've been told that just the rear wheel is locked up. Anyway, so what happened? I gave it some gas, and at around 2000 revs, the car was decelerating really hard without stalling the motor. And that's great. Now we try 40. Wonderful! What's that smell? If this car had a manual, I'd say that's the clutch. It's not a pleasant smell. This is going much better after disconnecting the speed sensor. Can I just reconnect the gear selector plug? Give me a few seconds. Okay, we're gonna do 40. The speedometer doesn't work. So I'll be waiting for a signal from the car driving next to me. That's 40. Damn it. It's not having it. It has no idea that I'm throwing it into reverse. I had a few good runs, but that's it. We're done here. Okay, fellas, I guess that's a wrap. Something very strange is happening to the car. So right now I have the gearbox in drive, and for the car to move forward, I have to give it like five and a half thousand revs. Look at that.
I can even bring it up to six grand. Meanwhile, look at how fast we're going. This thing's not accelerating. And here's the most interesting part. We were expecting something to happen, of course, but definitely not something this horrible. So check out what happens when I engage reverse. Right now I have the gear selector in R, and it used to back up with zero hesitation. I'm riding the limiter at six and a half thousand, and the car is barely even moving. So yeah, it doesn't drive in reverse anymore. There is one thing we could try that might revive the gearbox, but we'll leave that for next time. As for this experiment, it all went very well. You obviously shouldn't engage reverse while driving forward, unless you found yourself in some sort of extreme situation, like a couple of my buddies did a while back. Though they did tell me that they weren't going too fast, I think it was around 30 miles an hour. Anyway, their brake line ruptured, which by the way is something you should always keep an eye on. Anyway, they had to use reverse gear to stop the car when that happened. That was pretty much the only way out of that situation. So yeah, it does work. But it takes a serious toll on the gearbox. Right, and that's all I have for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.